Hi, I'm Ashley Ford here with PBS Books at the LA Times Festival of Books. USC campus is looking really beautiful today, but not half as beautiful as Diana Gabaldon, who is here with me to talk about her book. <laughs> well, thank you, Ashley. It's very kind. Uh, it's uh, lovely to be here today. Thank you for being here. So uh -huh. my mother-in-law, actually, our future uh -huh. mother-in-law, is the one uh -huh. who introduced me uh -huh. to your work, to oh, Outlander. Now, I had uh -huh. seen Outlander. Oh, the TV what show? feels yeah. like my entire <laughs> Like, not even the TV show. Oh, the just books around, yeah. Everywhere. Well, I kind of grew up in the uh -huh. library, uh -huh, you know, good. and I uh -huh. saw it quite often. Uh -huh. This is a book with legs, obviously. Yes, actually, the publisher emailed me yesterday to say congratulations. The mass market paperback of Outlander, the original, not the movie title, right. is uh, going back for its 73rd printing. So there are now 2,492,368, not like I memorized it or anything, <laughs> uh, copies of that single edition in print. <laughs> oh my goodness. And as a writer, what does that mean? feel like to know that this book that uh -huh. was published in 1991 it was, yeah, yeah. is a book that today people are still selling out of in That's good, yeah. <laughs> no, it feels real good. <laughs> you have to imagine. Uh -huh. And what was it like when, after, you know, Outlander had this great success and mm -hmm, you continue mm -hmm. to write stories in this mm -hmm. world? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember not too long ago Elizabeth Gilbert talking about the huge pressure ah. of writing another book after Eat, Pray, Love. Did you have ah. something similar after Outlander? Well, no, I didn't uh, for two reasons. One is that uh, I had got an agent before I finished writing the book. Oh, yeah. And so uh, I write books in pieces and then kind of join them up, and uh, mm -hmm. anyway, it's complicated. But I told him when I sent him the manuscript, I said, I realized while I was putting this together that there's more to this story. Mm -hmm. But I said, I thought I should stop while I could still lift it. <laughs> um, but, you know, if, if anybody is interested in the book, you know, uh, you can tell them I think there's more. Right. So uh, he sent it to five editors who he thought might like it. Mm -hmm. And within four days, three of them had called back with offers to buy it. So he was able to negotiate amongst them for a couple of weeks. He merged with a three-book contract because he said, she says there's more. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I was, you know, being a novelist. Like, and then you knew mm -hmm. that there was more, so I you knew were there was able more, to so, provide you know, the more. Yeah. yeah, so I just said, okay, well, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. It seems to work. So I just <laughs> I always mean, kept doing that. <laughs> it's still working. Everybody <laughs> loves this book. Oh, thank you. Can you tell me what... When were you originally approached about turning the book into something for the screen? Oh, people have been trying that uh, since about 1994, which wow. is when my third book hit the New York Times list. It was the mm -hmm. first one that did. Uh, but uh, yeah, we would get two or three or four uh, inquiries a month from people mm -hmm. at that point wanting to make a two hour movie out of it. and. Uh, there's things uh, for your viewers who may not have done a, an option before. Right. What an option is, is just a period of time during which these people have the exclusive right to try to put together the money required to, uh, to put together a, a film or a TV show or whatever. Right. Uh, so for a year, 18 months, five years, whatever you contract for, you know, it's up to them. They you know, scurry around and try to get an, a, mm -hmm. a director, try to attract stars, uh, you know, raise money, whatever, right. hawk their grandmothers. And uh, <laughs> you know, uh, if they can do it, then they pay you a slightly larger amount of money, which is mm -hmm. the uh, film's purchase price. And uh, after that, they own it. Wow. You'll never get it back, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is clear. what you want to bear in mind, yes. Yes. Because you know, they can uh, pay for it, own it, look at it and say, no, this is not going to work and never do anything with it, but you'll never wow. get it back. You can't sell it again to anybody. Wow. So you want to be real careful who you do option deals with. Absolutely. And for one thing, you want people who have actually made a movie or a TV show right. before <laughs> because there are a lot of people who want to try that and, you know, God bless them and more power to them, but you don't want them to do it on your book. <laughs> right. <laughs> you want that to be their learning experience. So that knocks out about 95% of the people who ask. Uh, beyond that, you want people who... Um, have made a, who have actually read your book. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people want it because it, it has a, a best-selling title. It's it popular. has a built-in fan base. Mm -hmm. uh-huh. And uh, that, in fact, is how we got the Stars uh, TV show. But um, because of that, uh, 
they aren't interested in the book itself. They're only interested in its fans. And so they say, well, we'll use the title, and now oh, it's in Scotland, fine, we'll have a guy in a kilt, but we're going to write the story. I mean, I have nothing to do with your story. Mm. So you want people who have read your book and understand your book. I had one very nice producer come to talk to me uh, one of these things from ABC, and she was very, very keen on the book, and we were talking along over lunch, having a really good time. Mm -hmm. And finally, we got to issues of casting and so forth, which is all theoretical. You know, you right. have nothing to say about it, but they yeah. always try to lead you on. And and uh, she said, well, of course, Jamie should be Scottish because of the accent, the kilt and all. She said, but I don't see why we can't change it so Claire is an American, because ABC, of course, had a stable of American actresses. Right. And I said, oh, well, in that case, you don't see why I won't give you an option either. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> because, you know, Claire is an English woman, and the fact that she is an English woman is, you know, important in multiple layers of the of the book. Absolutely. Yes. So you kept it all the way real from the beginning is oh, yeah. what I'm no. hearing. Uh -huh. No, the, uh, the people in the production on the show, one of them wrote to me, she said, you you know, what I like best about you is that you're extremely straightforward. Mm -hmm. You always just say what you think. She said, you have no idea how rare that is. And I said, well, that's the upside of dealing with me. The downside is you're always going to know what I think. <laughs> 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 I think people want to know what you think, you know what I'm saying? Like, people I've noticed who love Outlander mm -hmm. and the people who love mm -hmm. the show mm -hmm. Outlander mm -hmm. as well, yeah. they love you as an author. That's it's right not kind of just them. people mm -hmm. who like the leading characters ah. or <laughs> well, <I hope. laughs> who like the actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. They like Diana. Why well, do you really think nice. that is? <laughs> what is the special relationship mm -hmm. that you have with Outlander readers? Well, uh, in my previous incarnation, I was a scientist. Mm -hmm. I was a, pr a research professor at Arizona State University, mm -hmm. and I, my PhD is in quantitative behavioral ecology, which is just animal behavior with a lot of statistics. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but uh, I had kind of slid sideways during my career and become an expert in scientific mm -hmm. computation. It's really easy to be an expert if there's only six people in the world who do what you do. <laughs> but uh, anyway, because of that, I was online before the web existed. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually, uh, from the very early uh, days of the, you know, the Defense Department and things like DARPA right. Net and, you know, when there was Genie, CompuServe, and Delphi, that was all there was back then. And so when I began writing books and uh, so forth, I had stumbled into a group on CompuServe called the Literary Forum. Mm -hmm. Just people who liked books, you know, a lot of readers, some writers, but I was not going to tell any of these people what I did or right. what I was doing, <laughs> but uh, I was having an argument one night with a gentleman who uh, was <laughs> saying he knew what it was like to be pregnant because his wife had had three children. And I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, I've had three children. He said, can you tell me what it's like? I said, I can, yeah. It's kind of complex, though. I don't think I could fit it in a 30-line message slot. So I said, I tell you what, I have this piece I wrote about four months ago in which a young woman tells her brother in some detail what it's like to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll, p I'll post it in the library for you. So everyone who had been following this argument went and read the piece. And they all came rushing back. And they said, this is great. What is it? And I said, I don't know. And they said, well, where's the beginning? And I said, I haven't written that yet. And they said, well, you know, can you put up some more? These people are fascinating. We want to know what's going on. And so I, I don't write in a, with an outline, and I don't write in a straight line. I write mm -hmm. where I can see things happening, and then gradually they kind of stick together. But uh, whenever I had a piece, you know, every two or three months that would stand by itself without a lot of explanation, I'd put it up for them. And people got more and more enthused about it, and they would talk to me about, you know, why did they do this, and what does that word mean, and oh my God, you mean this really happened, and things like that. And so, you know, I, I kind of got hooked on that kind of, uh, you know, conversation. And yeah. so when I actually wrote a book, you know, I, I told my friends there, and uh, America Online had just started, and so I, you know, joined a couple of forums there. And mm -hmm. anyway, when um, Twitter came along and Facebook, you know, I, I keep an eye on, on the online world. Most of it, I didn't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> For assorted reasons, meaning there's not time enough in the world. Right. But, you know, if you, uh, there's a, a strategy to handling online media, you know, without losing your mind or, you know, your career or your family or anything like that. Right. And uh, so I, uh, I did that, you know, and I found it very, very helpful because marketing a book, especially a book or a series that cannot be described in genre terms, mm -hmm. is not the easiest thing. Uh, but if you can talk to people, you post little bits of what you're doing, that intrigues them. They talk to you and they say, well, what is this? And you say, what's this? And, you, oh, and by the way, you know, you can buy it here. Right. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, you know, you never set out to sell them a book or anything, but what you do is you let them look at you. So you've built mm -hmm. a real community, yes. to be perfectly honest. Like, yes. it's not just fans. Like, these no. people mm -hmm. are your community yes. uh -huh. and your mm -hmm. writing and reading community. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What are you excited about next? 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I am just entering the really exciting phase of the book that I'm working on now, yeah. which is the ninth book in the series. Oh. It's called Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone, which sounds very sinister as <laughs> so yes, we all think. Does. But basically, you know, it's uh, beekeeping folklore from all over Europe, but particularly mm -hmm. Scotland, Ireland, and there. Uh, and so the tradition has come down to the Appalachians, which mm -hmm. is, of course, where part of this story takes place. And the thing is, if you keep bees, you have to keep them apprised. Bees are a community. They live mm -hmm. in the human community, and they are interested in what's going on. So right. a good beekeeper goes to the bees every day and, you know, tells them the gossip, what's going on, <laughs> who's been born, who's died, you know, who's left the community, who's coming in. Right. And if you uh, don't tell the bees that someone has died or gone, and they find out, then they will be angry and fly away. So I always want to tell your bees. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I've never heard of anything like that. That yeah. sounds amazing. Oh yeah, no, if you look around on, online, you'll see it in uh, very, various places. <laughs> I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Uh -huh. Anything exciting coming up with the show? Oh yeah, no, they're doing good. They are coming into the final um, blocks of the show. Mm -hmm. They started filming in uh, September, I think, and mm -hmm. they'll end in June, so we're coming down to the... the the later parts where all of the plot starts coming together. But right. they've done some really fabulous stuff this uh, this season. They, I'm a consultant on the show, which yeah. means that they send me outlines and scripts and revisions, mm -hmm. and they send me the dailies that they shoot every day, which is a real treat because I get to wow. see what they've done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Including, you know, what the actors are doing in between scenes, which is usually... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like fun. It sounds like you're having a good time. Well, yeah, I really am. People mm -hmm. are enjoying the book. People mm -hmm. are enjoying the show. Uh -huh. I'm so much enjoying this conversation. I hate to well, wrap it up. thank you so up, much. But we've run out of, of time. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, Diana, for being here. Well, lovely to meet you, and best of luck with your own book. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Terrific. Yeah. And thank you so much for tuning in to PBS mm -hmm. Books here at the L.A. Times Festival of Books. We'll be back soon.